Ladies and gentlemen, it is Wednesday. The sun is up. After one of the most divisive periods in our nation's history that will only possibly continue. So much anger and hatred and uh, distrust and also jubilation and excitement from other people. So much division. I believe the one thing that can bring us together is uh, me talking over an old uh, video game. Ladies, gentlemen, friends, fellows, countrymen, children, boys, girls of every age. What you see here in a beautiful whip around is a virtual amalgamation of Memorial Stadium in Lawrence, Kansas for the first time in I think three weeks. We are back home to play some football and boy does it feel good taking on the Iowa State Cyclones. Well, I shouldn't say good because I, I think this is probably the worst team that KU is going to face all season outside of uh, the Rhode Island Rams. And I, I still don't know that the Jayhawks are really a better team than the Cyclones are at this point. Nobody really knows, though. We got two teams with one win and I think seven losses, eight losses maybe coming in to this game. So what what do we really know? KU is starting a, a freshman cornerback by the name of Carter Stanley, who had a pretty decent second half against West Virginia. So, you know, you uh, remain optimistic. A uh, defense that has been tried all year at Iowa State, they have been... People have been able to put points up on them, but, you know, who knows? Who really knows? We'll have to see tomorrow. What we do see here, though, in NCAA Football 98, which I will say is probably the best college football game for the PlayStation. Uh, I know what I said about NCAA Game Breaker, but this is just a little bit better, I think. Controls better, more fun, more lenient, I think, in a, at least in a modern context. I would rather play this over basically any other uh, college football game, even though it, it doesn't quite capture what real football feels like. This is a very unique sort of game. I think this is the only Madden game that ran on this... Or, I'm sorry, the only NCAA game that ran on this engine. Madden 97 and 98 ran on this engine where it was polygonal characters, polygonal, uh, polygonal models, I should say, on a uh, 3D, uh, or I'm sorry, sprite-based models on a polygonal field. I uh, got that mix up there as we go to the end zone for the touchdown right there. So it's a unique looking game. Not very many others like it. Uh, game Breaker by this point had already gone to the the uh, fully polygonal style that Madden would eventually adopt. Or, I'm sorry, that EA would, and Madden, and NCAA, whatever. That would happen in 1999. This is 98, and I honestly think that was a very tough transition for them. Really rough. Didn't quite get the feel of a good football game down until... Real, I kind of ironically until the PlayStation 2 came out because I think that version of Madden 02 on the PlayStation is pretty good, but nah, I don't think any of the NCAA games by EA are really that good after this one. 2000's okay. The halfback here uses speed to get to the corner, kind of a weird, just like perception based speed there in this game. With the characters being like sprites, it's hard to tell exactly how fast somebody's going sometimes. And then also, apparently for the Iowa State quarterback, hard to tell where the KU defenders are because he just threw it directly to one. We go to the outside to number seven. Again, who makes the catch, but it's incomplete. We go over the field goal, first time with that kicking meter. Yeah, not good, I would say. Uh, very bad. No points earned there, and uh, deservedly so. I'm kind of surprised, quite frankly, they didn't take any away for a field goal of that magnitude of, uh, of being missed. Not blocked, just very poorly kicked. Anyway, Iowa State gets the ball back, and here they are moving. Iowa State was better able to pass the ball this game than they were running the ball. They get the reception there. Had two guys on him behind, uh, behind the sticks. Would have stopped him from getting the first down, but neither of them can stop him in any way. It was a pass interference to boot. That's our second pass interference. I'm sorry, third pass interference call of the game. So that's a bad way to start out, and a bad way to go to the half is to give up seven points. But it is tied, so we do have basically a whole new ball game in the half. Both teams have momentum going in. KU's figuring out how to run the ball, but the pass was the bread in butter. We find the half. Uh, the fullback, rather, number 32 on the right side. He was making plays all game, he, the, um, particularly in the passing game. Not too good on the run, but in the pass game, he was out there making catches uh, with the best of them, probably more than the running back, even. We go over the middle and can't make the reception there on third down, though, so we go and actually make this field goal as opposed to the prior one, which we missed uh, in a way that I think should, quite frankly, have been illegal. 
<sighs> Iowa State gets the ball, and they try to run for it, but they just can't seem to get the run game going. Uh, I think that's the one good thing that the 98 Jayhawks defense apparently was. Uh, was uh, stopping the run. The 98 Jayhawks were not a good team. I think they lost a lot of games. If I remember, they lost maybe 3-9. and nine. I think they lost to Mizzou. Uh, definitely would have lost to K-State, Nebraska. I think they beat... If I'm not mistaken, this may have been the year they beat Oklahoma. But I could be completely wrong. I could have been, actually, 97 would have been the win. Yeah, so this would be the 97 team that beat Oklahoma. I think they went 4-8, and eight, so maybe not that bad. I, don't, I do not think they beat Mizzou, though. Obviously didn't beat K-State, Nebraska, and the Texas, all them, because they've never beaten those. Or they, they'd never beat them in the late 90s. So, anyway, Iowa State in town. This was during, right before a pretty decent era in Iowa State history, coming right off of the... Uh, what was that? The Troy was it? Troy Davis was his name. Their their running back who rushed for some inexorable amount of yardage in the mid '90s, up I think from about '93 to '96 or something like that. Was it the uh, you know was a Heisman Trophy candidate? Probably maybe the best player in Iowa State history outside of Seneca and, uh, and Jack Trice, of course. Granted, Jack Trice is more of a symbolic figure. We go over the middle. <laughs> that is knocked down. So we're trying to make something happen here as Iowa State has the lead in the fourth. So we get to about a fourth and two and we get, or I'm sorry, a third and two and we get sacked there. So we have to make the conversion here. We have an open man on the right side and we just overthrow him. So now the job comes to the KU defense. Well, the Iowa State offense got it started for him with a 10 yard penalty. So it's second and 18 after a stop there. Another stop there. This is where the run game for the Cyclones not working really comes to a head. They got to go 20 yards down the field to get a first down, and they don't. We get good pressure. So we get the ball back with just over two minutes left to go and one timeout. So it really is the quintessential two minute drill, Brett Favre style, as you will. The pass interference called on number uh, 32 on the Iowa State Cyclones defense. So that's their first of the game, but it could not have come at a better time for the Jayhawks. I would take all those uh, before if we get this one back here in the fourth quarter. Pass interference is really the only penalty that got called a bunch outside of all. The false start, I noticed, quite a, uh, quite a bit. Second and two, we go again to the right side. We had about an eight-yard gain by the quarterback here. Only get about four, but that's our six, rather, but that's all we need to get the first down. On first and ten, we go over the middle and make the reception there with number seven, our boy, who was making plays all game long. Number 13 had a damn good game as well. He was running, he was throwing, he was slinging, he was doing just about anything you could want. Number 7 with the slimmest of margins there on the left side makes the reception and gets the first down and then right here wide open is fullback number 32. Foreshadowed earlier in the game when he was making so many catches over the right side. Makes a big catch on the right side and scores 23-21. to And then my mindset went to probably more likely that the Cyclones are able to kick a short field goal or a long field goal than to you know to have score touchdown so we go for the two-pointer and we get it you know uh iowa state and kansas being decided by a two-pointer not uh, not not too uncommon in basketball but kind of uncommon in football get the interception to seal the game take the knee and there is really no fanfare or anything in this game when the game is over so i put my own archival footage of KU fans celebrating turning down a goalpost because this, in all likelihood, it would be the only win against a uh, Power 5 conference team, a you know, Big 12 team, really any number of, of different qualifiers you can put on this game this, uh, this weekend will probably be the only win that KU gets that isn't against the team from Rhode Island this year. And the posts go down. And if we win against Iowa State, I predict that will happen uh, as well. So, I'll see you guys next week. Thank you guys for watching. And you know what? I do hope they pull it out this weekend. Still hard to be optimistic, unfortunately.